This is the Owner 10 Lite. Okay, so coming in from Honor is one of their new budgety kind of phones. This is the Honor 10 Lite. Uh, it was launched, or well, it was announced around November of 2018, and finally we've managed to get our paws on it. Down at the bottom here, you can see there's some basic specs. This is the 64 gigabyte of ROM version, the 3 gigabyte of RAM version. It's black, and that's the model number for you. Okay, there's very little else around the box. It's in a nice. Uh, I guess it's a turquoise colouring, it's a, a bluish colouring if you ask me. But then who am I? Okay, so inside the box we have the phone on top, and it's not in any protective baggy, so I believe this has been looked at before, though it still has some of the protective plasticky things on it. Elsewhere in the box we have a box with some stuff in it. Both Honor and Xiaomi are doing very well at putting out these plastic cases uh, for you to protect your device right away before you go out and buy something else. Love that, very recommended. We have a, a SIM card ejector tool. So obviously this takes a SIM card. <clears throat> and we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, elsewhere we have a we have a charger here, which is a supercharge, it says on the front. And that looks like it's got 5 volts out, 2 amps, or 4.5 volts, 5 amps, if my eyes don't deceive me. I'll let you zoom in on that, because I can't quite see it through. Um, maybe I need spectacles. My wife's always at me about that these days. Uh, yeah, so it's a fairly small, compact charger. Could be a bit smaller that way, but... If it's a supercharger, we won't complain about it at all. We have a... No way. Oh, big way. Uh, we have a micro USB cable here. There. See that? That's a micro USB cable. The kids might not know what those are. Hmm. Okay. So, elsewhere inside, there's nothing else. You don't get any headphones or anything in the box. And that brings us to the device, which has a big 6.2 inch screen, uh, which is quite sizable. There is a screen protector already installed on it that's uh, almost non-existent. It's, oh yeah, it's very thin and almost goes up to the end. Obviously here we have a little notch, a bit of a, a cutout and a big fingerprint on it. Uh, down here there's another little cutout as well. Um, interesting to see that there. On the bottom, <laughs> yes, there is a micro USB connector here for charging. There is a speaker here, one speaker grill, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack there. A microphone hole as well. On the side here we get some rather stylish buttons. There's a bit of reflection to them, which is quite nice. Uh, volume up and down and a power button there. Up toward the top we have the tray there for the SIM card, plus a microphone on the top as well, and a small hole there for the SIM card ejector tool. Uh, down this side there is <clears throat> nothing. And then around the back here we have the AI camera. There's a small flash there, it looks like it'll be a, a dual flash as well. And then we have dual lenses here. Uh, one is a 13 megapixel uh, a uh, lens that has an f-stop of 1.8 and then the other is a 2 megapixel uh, depth sensor lens. I don't know which way around they are, I'm just pointing at one in the hope that I get it right. You never know, I might have. Then there's a fingerprint sensor there as well and some bits of information. You can see there there's actually uh, a micro SD card slot in the SIM card tray so I don't think we need to bother pulling out the SIM card tray to just to, to check that. It's on there. Uh, we have nano sim and micro sim, so this is actually dual sim, as well as being, uh, I suppose, yeah, I chose that there as well, as well as that. And then there's NFC just here. Very handy that they put that on there to, to find it. I have my Samsung. I'm constantly going. Wh um, wh where do I hold this to pay? And it's somewhere in the middle here. It's nice to know that it's up here, 
on the Honor. Okay, so around the front, this is a 24 megapixel camera up the top here, uh, which uh, has an f-stop 2.0. It's uh, HDR and films at 1080p, 30 frames per second, and I should have mentioned that the back one does 1080p, 30 and 60 frames per second. There's no 4K on this phone, but then you generally don't get it at this price point. So we'll turn her on and check and see that there's some power in it, and we'll have a quick look at the innards. So initially, yep, the, the screen does almost go right up to the edges. There's still a few millimeters between uh, the edge of the screen and the the well there's a bezel yeah um the screen protector does go right up to the very edge of the screen which is kind of nice uh, you can see we sensor flashing up there at the top uh, so that's where the sensor array is i forgot to mention there is a little earpiece in there that allows you to hear the person you're calling just above the camera if i turn the light you can see it there And it looks very pretty. It's got, uh, well, well, we'll pull it down and check and see what version we're on. This should be one of the latest versions, I'd like to think, of EMUI. This is EMUI Build 9, which is built based on Android version 9. So we're up to date, so to speak. And uh, while we're in the settings, I'll have a quick look at the storage as well. This is the 64 gigabyte version, so we can see there that 10 gigabytes has already been used by the onboard system. Uh, there's some images that are there with 18 megabytes worth and 600 megabytes worth of apps installed out of the box, although I'm realizing that I haven't set this up, so perhaps the person who had this before me has installed a few things already. So we'll have a look and see what's here. We've got a phone manager, which allows us to optimize our phone, uh, monitor our data usage, clean up, block calls, give us, us uh, an idea of how much battery life we have left. Drop zone, which is their NFC wireless uh, file transfer thing, I think, allows apps to show their drop zones. Okay, well, we'll have a look into that for the review. Uh, there's a virus scanner, always handy. Uh, there's the themes shop that allows us to go online and download various different themes for the phone. I think some of them are purchasable and there's a good amount of free ones as well. We have a music player of which there is one song and we'll have a quick test of it. Speaker's not great for music, but uh, it would probably be better for voice and the likes of things. There isn't much bass and there isn't much depth to the music. Uh, it's It seems quite superficial, um, but for voice calls, that's fine. We've got a 3.5mm headphone jack, so all your audio needs are covered. We have videos, of which there is nothing. Uh, there is the Google Suite for you to play with. Uh, the Play Store, well, obviously we need to sign in for that. Settings and the Photo Gallery. Uh, take a scroll down. There should be some, well, there was 18 megabytes worth of photographs already taken, so I wonder where they are. Uh, we'll have a go ourselves right now and uh, take some pictures to throw into the video for you to have a look at. I'm going to give the screen a quick wipe first because it's a wee bit stinky. Okay, so uh, we have a very standard camera interface uh, for Huawei. Uh, down at the bottom here we have, well, we'll fire across. Oh. We have aperture settings, night settings, portrait, photo, video, and more. Then under more we have a pro mode, panorama, AR lens, light painting, HDR, time lapse, filter, and stickers. So, uh, if anything, on or take there photography very seriously and they like to get the most out of their cameras and their camera suite is pretty terrific I have to say and uh, there's a lot to play with there and looking at the image that's on the screen through the, the screen right now it's actually quite nice and um, the the wood is showing up uh, very well we have the AI uh, 
no, it, it's now on actually the AI enhancement suite uh, is disabled. So we'll, we'll take a couple of pictures with the AI suite off and on just so you can get an idea of uh, of the difference to expect. And we'll start off with Mr. Williams here from the Evil Dead franchise. And now we'll turn on the AI. And we'll move across to the books and see what t some texts look like. And move across to the AI. And then the keyboard on the tablet. And try it with the AI. So going in, ah, right, okay, so in the gallery it actually shows up whether or not the AI has been used or not. So with uh, Mr. Williams here, zooming in, it does look kind of clear in the center piece, uh, however the veins in his arms are a wee bit blurry. Uh, going over to the AI version, oh, that's, that's vastly superior, you can see the, the veins are much more defined. Yes, uh, the, the AI has, has really worked there. Um, looking at the books, you can see some of the, the text does look very clear, uh, going down to some of the sides of the, te the text and the, the sides of the screen, they are clear as well, so that it's a, it's a good all-rounder there, even down the, the base there where we have Pan and Picador, uh, those labels are, are coming out quite clear. With AI Enhanced, um, one thing I did notice there, there was a bit of blurring on Douglas Adams there on the restaurant at the end of the universe. So going across to this one, the AI is a lot clearer. Uh, especially down down to the bottom with uh, where the labels are as well. Yep, so once again the AI really seems to be a winner there. Now the ultimate test, I think, of clarity. Taking pictures of this keyboard. Um, yeah, that that's really good. Uh, there's virtually no blurring whatsoever there. It looks really well. Uh, all of the letters are very well pronounced, and you can even make out the smaller ones. Which some cameras that I've looked, or camera phones that I've looked at in in the past year that are twice the price of this, um, I don't think do as good a job as this has done right now. It might be a little bit fuzzy down here in the bottom right where it says menu and things like that. But the at the focal point, it's crisp and clear. Going to the AI camera, again, focal point, crisp and clear. Down in the corners, looking quite good. Uh, the menu is clearer th uh, on this particular instance. Right, so sliding over this side, we've got our Google, uh, well, it's looking for SwiftKey to be installed and updated and things. We've got our Google news feed over to the, <laughs> to the left there which isn't working because we're not logged in. We've got our phone messaging application, uh, Chrome and the camera. Then over here we have High Care, uh, which is our fitness suite developed by Huawei, which we need things. Uh, then there's the app gallery privacy notice. This isn't gonna work because we're not on Wi-Fi. I'll get her on the Wi-Fi. There we go. So, uh, going into our app gallery, it's a another app store, much like Google Play. I haven't actually seen this before. Uh, that we can install essential applications. Right, okay, so we've got True Caller and TikTok radio. So, there must be an FM radio built into this. WhatsApp Tools, MX Player, which is one of the best video players you can get. QR Scanner, which is something I use. Uh, Deezer, AliExpress, yeah, there's a, a collection of applications there for you to either choose some or ignore. 
Uh, there's the files menu, which our application that allows us to go through and there we go, version 10.2. Okay, so now we have a new souped up version of oh, files that looks identical to what it did before. But file managers always very handy. The health suite. Wait a minute, didn't we just have one of those? Huawei Health. I'm not a member of that. So what's the difference between that and Huawei Care? Ah, okay, so Huawei Care is more of a community so that you can uh, ask them how to do stuff, get technical support and that sort of thing, not look after your body. That's what the Huawei Health Suite is for. Then we have a clock that allows us to do stuff, set alarms, uh, stopwatch, world clock and timers. We have the calendar, which is very nice. Calendars are nice. An email application, a notepad for jotting down simple notes, Honor, which will likely take us to the Honor store so that we can buy interesting bits of Honor gear, whether it be, oh, it's just the website, uh, chargers and uh, cases and that sort of thing and other Honor products. So then we have a, a tips application as well that uh, gives us tips on how to get the most out of our phone. Which is very useful. It is, especially if you're you're coming to this um, as either a new user or having spent a number of years in Samsung or whatever. It's it's a very welcoming um, interface that allows for people migrating over from other operating systems and other variants of operating systems. Uh, tools we have Huawei Wallet. Is that Huawei Pay? Okay. Uh, we have contacts, weather, calculator. A voice recorder, FM radio, torch, compass, a backup uh, facility, phone clone for uh, anyone who has two phones, downloads, a uh, download manager, SIM toolkit, SIM toolkit because it's dual SIM, we've got two toolkits, and a party mode. And I'm pretty sure this is uh, where you get to, yeah, wireless LAN. And then you all play back on the same phone so you can sit in a group and listen to the same song and it'll come out of each of the film each of the phones and swap things. Send pictures and that sort of thing together. So you can start your <clears throat> uh, sync music playback across multiple phones to create an immersive surround sound effect and then be able to trade images and that sort of thing. We've got some top apps. We seem to be getting this all the time. Amazon and eBay. I guess they're okay, but then there's recommend more as well here. No apps, no recommended apps, but I'm guessing if you start using these more, it'll start recommending stuff. We have Facebook installed by default, and we can uninstall it, thankfully. Uh, we have booking.com as well. So no drawer or any of that kind of caper. Uh, the Google wall is starting to work. Uh, keep up to date with your favorite information. So if you sign into your Google account, it'll start to populate there. And then up the top here, we have the, the notification shade that we pull down and we have lots of little interesting things to play with. Uh, we have my Miles Towers, which is my Wi-Fi. Bluetooth isn't turned on. The torch right there. <laughs> Sound, auto rotate, Huawei share, which is NFC sharing, I'm guessing or Bluetooth or that kind of thing. Uh, airplane mode, mobile data, location, screenshot. And turning that on, we have uh, access to our Huawei ID and all of our settings for us to be able to play around with, uh, all laid out in a different way to most of the other phones. Well, it's, it's still fairly self-explanatory. Say so our storage cleaner allows us to get rid of some of our storage so storage sufficient we can clean up some of our larger apps get rid of some of the larger apps as well very handy so looking at the phone it 
it's really quite nice. Um, this is a £200 phone, although if you look around you can find it a wee bit cheaper than that on various different websites. I think the, er the lowest I found it was 140 which is particularly good. The 6.2 inch IPS LCD display is very attractive. It's a, it's a gorgeous looking display. Um, and, and for the money, that's that's a bit of a steal, to be honest. The camera worked very well as well. Um, the three gigabytes of RAM is a bit of a sore spot. Um, however, you know, the four gigabytes is in the Pixel 3. So uh, three gigabytes, you're not going to suffer too much. Um, maybe in about a year's time, this will start to feel a bit slow and it's, it's having trouble uh, because of the, the lower amount of RAM. But right now, it seems to be perfectly acceptable. So it's it's being powered by the high silicon Kirin 710, uh, which is an octa-core 2.2 um, gigahertz Cortex processor inside, which is which is fine, I suppose. Uh, it it runs fairly smoothly. We haven't um, pushed it through any games to see if PUBG works particularly well, but I'm not going to go down that route. Uh, the GPU uh, is a, a Mali G51 MP4. And the resolution sits at 1080 by 2340, which all in really makes to be a, a pretty fantastic suite for a 200 pound phone. That is the biggest problem, the micro USB connector. But to many, that's not going to be a big problem. Um, a couple of years of having to continually put in the micro USB connector the wrong way round and then finding the right way around for it would irritate quite a few people but there's quite a few people out there who probably don't give a damn about the whole USB-C thing and they're happy enough to pay 200 quid and carry on using all the cables that they've collected from their last couple of phones. I'm, I'm defending the USB <laughs> micro USB connector right now which I never thought I would but I can kind of understand whenever it comes down to a budget phone like this if they were able to shave a couple of P off that and put in a slightly better screen then it was absolutely worthwhile because this thing is gorgeous and I, I'll go back to the camera again because I was really really impressed with the quality of those pictures I did not expect uh, such good clarity from such a cheap phone and it really has come on. Now, obviously, looking over there, you can see the bit of the bookend. It's having a bit of trouble with the uh, with the transparent perspex of my bookend that you can't really see. But you know, for taking a, a quick snap, um, it's captured most of the detail rather well. Um, the background there doesn't look particularly good, but it's it's got the foreground, which is what you're taking a picture of. And I'm sure having a camera suite like we have on here. Um, you'll be able to find a, a perfect selection of of tools for everyday camera picture taking. You know, the, the, there are plenty of modes here for you to play around with until you get the right one, but um, from sh shooting straight from the hip, you have some good results right away. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously impressed with this um, for the money. The budget end of the phone world is really getting very competitive. And it's it's really nice to see that, that £200 can get you this level of, uh, of technical hardware. Yeah, really good. So I'm going to go away and use this as my main phone for the next couple of weeks and uh, report back my findings on Tech Addicts. So if you have any questions or anything you want me to look at in particular, let me know in the comments down below. Hit that subscribe button and give us a wee thumbs up if you fancy. And other than that, take care.